uh, do a lot of the actual enclosure work. We have five, five CNC machines here. Five. And this is where we build a lot of the parts. This is the back of an M2. Andy, yes. you want to explain what this is? Okay, so. Hey, Andy, how are you? How's it going? So basically, I got one right there, Dave. <laughs> We start off with our blank piece and we stick it into the machine and when we're done with our first operation it comes out looking like this. And then after that we take this fancy little fixture, stick it on top, and then we run our second op and we're left with the back plate. So the whole process, how long does it take to machine a power uh, like so this? This specific job, this operation is about 30 minutes. Uh, to run this it's maybe about an hour, hour and a half. You know, so all, all the 3D stuff it does. The uh, inside 3D countersink, all that stuff, just takes some time. But and then it taking done. it out, putting it back. So would you say this is like a two, three hour work for each part? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For, so for this so three hours to three make hour. the back of an M2, one M2. Three hours. Yeah. For for the for the front plate, it would probably be about maybe four. Four. It's probably about an hour for op one because it's a lot of stuff we got to hog out and and uh, cut out. And, and these are our smallest. Products. Right, right, correct. Yeah. Do this on an M6 or an M9. How long does the M9 take? Oh, the M9, it, it takes uh, more than a shift. Wow. It takes over one shift to do one M9. One part. And part. Yeah, well, one part. The, the M9 one bottom part. plate, the front bottom plate, will we'll take a full shift. Wow. Uh, same with the uh, M6 front plate, it's about a full shift. Wow. So there's just so much to take out. Once wow. We, once we start getting into the M series, then introduce curves all over the speaker and all this compound curvature. Well, a lot of you, these aluminum parts, we're having to do up to 80, 85 percent material removal. Um, so from your solid 500 pound block of aluminum, about 80, 80 percent plus is ending up as aluminum chips over the over these dumpsters here that we fill up uh, about every four or five days. Um, so minus a few chips that we'll take out on the bottom of our shoes, uh, all this will get melted down and we're about as close to a zero waste shop as you can get. So this gets melted down, you said? All yeah. of this? Wow. All the aluminum, all the shavings, everything, guys. Unbelievable. I don't think that, I don't think that I've ever seen this on any video, uh, online at least anyway, so it's, it's incredible. It's amazing to see this. So Thanks, this is Andy. what's happening here in this machine. Uh, it's another machine just like that. What are we doing here, Andy? Uh, right now we're making a fixture. Oh, you uh, can actually see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we're, we're making a fixture. I can uh, pause it real quick. Oh, uh, Look at that. So, 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 we have a, so this is going to be a fixture so we can cut some angle holes. Okay. You know, so normally, you know, something like this might take like a, a fourth or fifth axis machine, uh, but we're we're doing what you know we're we're doing what we can with what we got. Okay. So right now, this part, this fixture is going to mimic. Um, it, it would be like us putting putting a, a, a flat a part down the table and then angling it this way and then angling it this way to get the hole to go straight down. Got it. So that when the rods go in, they're going to go in at the right angle when we pull everything together when we're building it. So it, 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 it's a fixture for for uh, uh, for the uh, basically a fixture for a fixture that, that we got to run for something new we're coming out with. Wow! So, yeah, it's it's a trip. <laughs> it is, I see it. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. It's the first time of me seeing something like this. Wow. Yeah, unbelievable, man. Just incredible what goes behind the scenes. I'm I'm just uh, shocked to know that all this goes into. Uh, all your loudspeakers yep. you know never we i don't think most people realize the level of work uh, that this takes right. you know and so see i think this seeing this also builds a lot of appreciation for the speaker for the line uh and obviously for the work that you guys are doing here um this goes oftentimes unfortunately this goes oftentimes unnoticed but now that you highlight it and we can see it we 
have an idea, because I'm sure that this is not the whole story, but we have a small idea of what it takes to build, to build loudspeakers like this. All right. Incredible. Yeah, it it's is. Thank you. Appreciate Come your on. time. Thanks, Andy. Uh, just back to my recent point about uh, material removal. This is the, the M6 faceplate, uh, which I am actually able to hold here by myself with a uh, little bit of, uh, much little bit of difficulty. But this starts out as, this starts out as three and a half inches thick. Holy crap, man. About a 450 pounds block of aluminum that we need a crane to, to load into the machine. Oh, um, in fact, you so, can see them here on the bottom. This is what it starts like. Right. Wow. Oh, this is this is the uh, aluminum piece. Yep. Right here. Yep. Wow. So it starts with this. This is about 450, you said. Yep. And end up with this. Which is how much? 50. More 50. or less. How long does it take? 50 to 50. So how long does it take to go from That's here to here? It's a whole shift. That's about eight this hours. This is about yeah. It's about it's eight, eight hours. hours to go from this block to this aluminum. Yeah. yeah to this. We've, uh, we've uh, removed about 80 percent. 80 percent of the material. Between the, the first side operation, hogging out all the holes for the drivers, uh, a pocket in here for our constrained layer damping material, wow. and then flipping over and doing the even slower side to get the, that curved finish on the exit. Let me ask you something. This is actually a uh, um, question that I, uh, before I forget, now with all the problems, COVID and the, you know, all the resources yeah. and the aluminum and everything yeah. going up in yeah. price, right? Mm -hmm. What challenges do you typically are, are you seeing right now? acquiring aluminum quality parts across especially the part, uh, i mean across the, the the entire spectrum uh i mean there are problems getting uh material uh especially copper titanium are difficult to actually get never mind the cost which went up through the pandemic was skyrocketing now it's kind of coming back down a bit uh so uh, uh, logistic, I mean, even when you get the parts, getting them in is, is, is a big problem as well. So uh, there are issues across, across the board. It's, it's, it's very hard time for manufacturing now. Very hard time, yeah, right? And I, can I mean, we're hoping it's getting better. It looked like it was getting better. And then, you know, uh, the war in, in Russia started, that kind of. So there's always something, but it's definitely uh, very challenging. And what I've heard uh, uh, from another uh, manufacturer was the fact that when they buy parts and they come in, they're not even close to what they used to be. So they have to oftentimes send them back and say, this is not yeah. at the level of what we were ordering. So now you have all those problems too, Absolutely. and hurdles and things yeah. of that nature. That, that, uh, happens, that happens as well. I mean, we are less exposed to that because we do a lot of the work ourselves. Right, right. So we, we, we know what aluminum we need and we know when it comes in what it is. Uh, so we don't get bugged down on those uh, arenas. Uh, but it's getting the stuff in. Uh, it's getting, getting it hard. It's getting the titanium. Um, and that's, that's challenging. Yeah. If someone, let's say, was to order an M9, right, and the order comes in, do you have everything in here? to build an N9 right away, or do you have to start beginning to order all these parts? No, we, we typically build in batches. So, okay. we, yeah, we don't, we don't do one-off. Okay. Uh, so if we do M9, let's say we build, uh, whatever, 10 pairs, a batch of 10 pairs. Uh, it depends when the order comes in. If it comes in and we still have two pairs that are, were not sold from those 10, then it's no there. problem. It's no problem. Uh, it's coming up. It's still, it takes, it, 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 it takes about eight weeks just to put the thing together. I mean, we have all the parts. It's just actual building an M9 is, is a two months ordeal. Wow. Uh, but um, but if, if we are starting a new batch, then, then yes, you can, you can wait a year to get, uh, to get an M9. Yeah, I figure yeah, that. So it depends difficult. where you fall in the, uh, in the cycle. The next production the cycle. Of course, on... Uh, more uh, kind of a uh, uh, mundane products like the A series, etc. Uh, it's we build big batches, uh, but it's also these days getting an A series uh, takes time. We just we sold a lot of those, and there's only so many hours in the day to actually put them together. Sure. So that takes time as well. Sure. Okay.
All right, so this is a warehouse. You can just see parts here that are being uh, um, stored, all sorts of products. Here are some S7 uh, plates. S1 tops, whereas uh, the A series is all black anodized and the M series is all black and carbon fiber. The S series, we do offer 12 different finishes. You have the, the high, our high gloss MCO orange. Um, so with our S series, we do stock bare aluminum parts out here, waiting for your choice of color to come in. So we can send it out to our finishing vendor. Now the painting is not, if someone wants like my orange S7, that's not done here. That's no. not done here. No. You guys outsource that and yes. get. Yes, we have a, a very high and automotive uh, guy that does. Okay. Oh, uh, and, and let me let me just say this: uh, when he says that, I am here to tell you, it, it's absolutely astonishing the the colors of the speaker, the magical speakers. Um, I can grab, <laughs> I can probably grab this here, and bang it against my speaker. I mean, you know what I'm saying, and and the pain is fine. Don't do like, that. But, don't do it. <laughs> But the paint is fine. Like I have seen it where if I'm lifting something, my belt buckle rubs up against paint. Now there's paint missing. I've seen it before with some brands. That is not the case with Magical. I have seen it firsthand. I made a comment to you as well. So whoever's doing the painting, man, they're doing an exceptional and job. And it's not just uh, the durability, but it's also the quality. I mean, just yeah, absolutely. The orange peel it's beautiful. The, yeah, it's, it's uh, but you it's, can it's tell. Really high end. Uh, I, absolutely. Uh, I, paint. I, thousand yeah, percent yeah. can't really deny that yeah and th this is another interesting part uh this is all one extruded piece okay uh, so imagine what it takes to do that i mean the way these things are done again you take a billet of aluminum you heat it up and you push it against a die which basically think about co cookie cutter okay uh but think about this the entire uh center actually is hauled off so how do you do that? You have to have a center that is being held mm -hmm. by these lines uh, in the cookie cutter, in the, in the die, and you push the aluminum through that. And it comes on the other end, it still has these lines, but it has to kind of heal and come together. So at the end, you get a product with no center. Mm -hmm. It's just a mind-boggling mind -boggling process thing. to yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, uh, absolutely. So, uh, Incredible. So that's that's a, a, an S1, and actually the S3, which I don't see here, uh, is even bigger. A bigger one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. So let's right. go and look a bit here on let's some small parts. I we do inventories and maybe take a break. Either okay, and then wait for the guys. Uh, we can also do the other side before, uh, or they're uh, out to lunch. I think we should just wait for all that until one. Okay. Uh, if you want to do some either some conference room time. Yeah, I guess we can do that. All these little things, everything here has to be, has been machined here. I mean, all these rods, all these. Uh, this is what goes inside the speakers, yes. right? The bracing? Yes, this yeah. is all bracing. Bracing, Every right? Every single one of these things have to be machined. Wow which is like you saw there, it's putting it up, putting it down, mm -hmm. taking it off, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. This is another interesting part that people don't see. Uh, this will damps the speakers, these layers of uh, EAR material. They're designed especially for us. When we actually build the speakers, we can measure the vibration on the panels, and we can see which frequencies needs to be addressed. Huh. And wow. based on that, we build uh, we don't build them, they're built for us. These uh, um, uh, elastic materials that are being pressed between the plates and create constrained layer damping. So for anyone who thinks that aluminum is not a good material for loudspeakers, think again. Because it's extremely stiff uh, and light for its stiffness, it doesn't store energy. It's extremely easy to dissipate the energy from it. Uh, and we do it three through those uh, apparatus of constrained layer damping. So you end up with a very well damped structure, yet extremely stiff, which is the perfect platform for loudspeaker enclosure. Mm -hmm. Got it. Lots of different parts. All of our models, uh, our mid-range uh, volumes are isolated from the base volume. So most of our, most of our models, uh, our mid-range enclosures are made from a proprietary polymer. It's a much more damped, uh, material that's more ideal for mid-range frequencies um, but when you step up to an M or an M6 or an M9 you then move into a full carbon fiber mid-range enclosure. Like to Look at this guys, wow. 
This is the enclosure of the mid-range driver, carbon fiber. Yeah, that's solid carbon. Wow. And this obviously is going to just really take the performance of that mid-range driver to a whole new level yeah, by being it's completely... It's the shape, uh, it's an inverse horn, so uh, you don't have standing waves and the, and the, and the pressure kind of gets dissipated as it goes into the back. Got it. Uh, and uh, also the material, it's extremely damped. Yep. And, uh, it is, it and that's is. what a mid-range...